Okay, good morning everyone. We are back into the Yud Gimel Ikrim, the 13 principles of faith. And we left off with a new one, which we didn't start yet, and that is Ikr Chi'i, which is the ninth foundation over here in the principles of faith. And the way that it is written in the Sidorim is Ani Ma'amin Be'emuna Shalema. I believe Be'emuna Shalema with complete faith. Shezais HaTayra, that this Torah which we have in our possession, Leise Mukhlefes, it will never be exchanged. Vleise Torah Acheres, and there will never be another Torah. Me'es habare yizbarach shemai from Hakadosh Baruch Hu himself, which means that once that Hakadosh Baruch Hu has given us this Torah, and He has given us these mitzvahs, and it was given to us at the revelation that we witnessed by Har Sinai at Mount Sinai, and Moshe Rabbeinu was the Navi par excellence, like we learned about him that there never ever was a Navi like him, and there never ever will be a Navi like, a prophet like him. Once all of that is true, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu went through such great lengths to give over the Torah the way that he did, it's Laisei Mukhlefes, it will never change, which means that Hashem is not going to change anything that there is inside the Torah, nor will he give Torah Acheres. It's two things the Rambam is saying over here. Number one is, he's not going to make changes to the Torah. Let's say he leaves things. This is not America. This is not a democratic society. This is not a Bill of Rights or a uh, Declaration of Independence in which people can come along generations later and say, you know what, those founding fathers, they weren't liberal enough. They didn't see life the way that we see life. We've got to make some changes over here. So we'll amend and we'll add things in or will remove things that just don't fit for the generation. Says HaKadosh Baruch it doesn't work like that with Torah. Torah is not something that can be, can be mukhlefes, that you're going to be able to exchange or change around. You can't add anything inside of it. And you can't take anything away either, as we'll see. And number two, never expect that HaKadosh Baruch is going to give a Torah acheres. Torah acheres means another Torah that means he would have to do everything that he did the first time around in order to present us with a different Torah. Meaning, just like he brought Klal Yisrael together as one. And at that time, there was only three million of us, so you, and they were all in one area. And he brought us into the Midbar, into the wilderness, and he gathered us around Har Sinai. And Moshe Bainu was the leader who was a pipeline of Nevoah prophecy to Hashem. And Moshe Rabbeinu was able to convey the words and the messages of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And all of Klal Yisrael heard what HaKadosh Baruch Hu was saying when he said over the Yisrael, he said, the Ten Commandments. So unless HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to do exactly the same thing that he did 3,500 years ago, so there never ever will be a Torah Acheres, another Torah that can be given to us. Because it's impossible to recreate the Nesina Satari, the giving of the Torah. It's impossible to make a brand new giving over of something which took place in a miraculous way that was for the time, for the place, and the Torahs of all eternity. And therefore, says the Rambam, two things you have to know. Number one, don't expect changes to come inside this Torah. It is sealed and written in stone, or signed and sealed in stone over here. It's not going to put in anything, and it's not going to take anything out. And don't think that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as he goes down the annals of history, and he says to himself, you know, I thought I designed a very good Torah. I thought that it could work for my nation and for, my gen- and for the Jewish people. I thought they would understand what it means to be careful with Lashon Hara. I thought they would appreciate Shabbos. I thought they would like the laws of Kashrus. I thought that they would understand what Sukkot is all about and what Pesach is really, what the message is, and Shavuot is receiving the Torah. I thought that they were going to appreciate all these things and that it would connect with the deepest places inside of their neshama, inside of their soul. But you know what? Now it's 2020. So many of my yidin are out in Gullis in exile. 
it's uh, the technology exile that we are living in right now. Torah just, I don't know, it just doesn't feel the same way that it used to, says Hashem. I don't see the people getting excited about it the way that they used to. This is not the Torah of a thousand years ago when the Rambam and Rashi were in the world. It's not the Torah of the Baba Sali, of the Chavetz Chaim. It's not the Torah anymore, the Vilna Gaon. What can we do? Says the Kodesh Baruch Hu, you know what? Let me just make a new Torah that's going to be the Torah of this generation. Says the Rambam, Chas v'chalila, God forbid that a person should ever think such a thing. There never will be another Torah that a Kodesh Baruch is going to replace with the Torah that we have right now because as we're going to learn, Torah is eternal. The same Torah that was given over at Mount Sinai to the three million neshamas that were standing there. And as we know, Chazal teaches all of the neshamas that would ever be part of Klal Yisrael, they were also there in Ruach, in the spirit, at the giving of the Torah. That means that the Torah itself, which was given over at Har Sinai, is equally equipped to connect with a neshama from 2,000 years ago, with a neshama that was standing by Har Sinai, to a neshama that was walking through Auschwitz, going into the gas chambers, and yes, to a neshama that is going through the spiritual holocaust that exists around us all of the time here in America or wherever the people might be in the gullus and the exile of this world. And therefore, there's no change. It's not man-made laws over here. That man, at the time of that period in, in history, decided that that's what's going to be good. Which is why, as we spoke about this before, that is why you see in the in the in, in you see in the laws of the the Constitution of the United States of America, that was written in 1776. That was for a nation that was running away from religious persecution and from political persecution, and they came these fledgling pilgrims over here to American soil and shore, and they were building a new world for themselves. And therefore, under those circumstances, they felt this is what is best for our, for our society. It's what's best for our people. It's how we're going to thrive and we're going to grow in the, in the best possible way. However, it was a, a, a minuscule world compared to what we have right now. It was a tiny microcosm of the America that we have right now. And as man, quote unquote, progresses in this world, and as society begins to expand in this world, and as there are different nations that come in, and now America, once upon a time, was for the pilgrims, but now it is the great American melting pot where everybody just blends one into the other. So then you have a lot of new ideas and new situations that you have to deal with. And then we begin, the lawmakers begin scratching their heads and say, you know what? What, John, what, what uh, Thomas Jefferson and John Hancock wrote over there in the Constitution so many years ago doesn't apply anymore. Or how could they have forgotten about this? Or why didn't they think about this? They didn't think about it because it didn't exist at that time. It wasn't in their mind at that time. And therefore, they were very limited in what they were able to put down on paper. As the generation continues to evolve, so to speak, and the societal norms get worse and worse as the time goes on, and all the people from all the different nations come and infiltrate the country over here, and there's not, there's not even such a thing anymore as an American. There's no such thing really as a, as a pure bred American. It almost doesn't exist. That means that when Thomas Jefferson was writing down in there, you should do this and this and this and this, and you're right for this, you're right for this, you're right for that. He never thought about half the things that are going on in the world today. So comes along man, and since that Jefferson was only a human being, and George Washington was only a human being, and John Hancock, he had a nice big signature, but at the end of the day, he's just a human being. And they ended up writing what they wrote because that was for their time. So man comes along 100, 200, 200 years later and they say, listen, 
We got to deal with our nation, with our generation, with our people, with their struggles, with their morality or lack of morality, with their sordid life or their good life. We have to deal with that. So we can't condemn everybody who doesn't follow in suit with what it says in the original, in the original books. So let's change things around. Torah is not like that. Because Torah was written by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu at the time that he was writing the Torah, he knew what's going to be in every single generation. And he knew how Klal Yisrael was going to develop. How we're going to be the children of Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. He knew about Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, that we're going to go down into the Gullis, into the exile, and eventually he's going to redeem us, and we'll stand by Harsinah to receive the Torah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knew that it's not going to be an easy path of history for Klal Yisrael. He was well aware. And he knew that one day that our nation was going to end up in probably the worst spiritual gullus of all, we'd end up in America or any other place in the world right now. And HaKadosh Baruch has said over the following thing. I am writing a Torah that is not only for the people that are standing by Harsinai. It is not only for the generation that will walk through the wilderness who knew me so well. It's not only a Torah that is going to be that when Yeshua will walk Klal Yisrael into the land of Eretz Yisrael and they will conquer the nations that are there and they will eventually, eventually when Shlomo Amalek comes along, build the base on Migdash. It's not only for all of the stories that we have in Tanakh for those generations. The Torah that I am writing and that I'm giving over to Klal Yisrael is loy sehei muchlefes. There is nothing that is lacking from it at all. It's not missing one drop of ink. There's not one mitzvah that is, doesn't, that, that is not in there that belongs there. And every mitzvah that is there, it's there because you need it. Not just for the days of Moshe Rabbeinu, not just for the days of Yeshaya Hanavi, not just for the life of David HaMelech and his son Shlomo, no. The Torah which is relevant to the generations of 3,500 years ago and 2,000 years ago, and for Rashi and his children and his grandchildren 1,000 or 900 years ago, the same exact Torah is relevant to us today. And the reason is because when the Torah, which we have, is created by the Rebbeinu Sha'ilam, the master of the world, who is the Haya Hayve Ve'yihiyah, he was, he is, and he always will be. That means that there is nothing that is concealed from him. He knows exactly the trials and the tribulations, the deficiencies and the strengths of mankind, of Klal Yusuf, for all generations. And he didn't place a single mitzvah in the Torah that cannot be kept any single generation that the Jewish people exist in. There is no difference between our tefillin and the tefillin that Rashi wore. There is no difference between our lulav and our esrog that we will take on Sukkot this year than the lulavim and the esrogim that the Jewish people took when they brought them into the Beis HaMikdash. When we will sound the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah this year, and we will hear the blast of tekiah, cheruah, shvarim, there is nothing different from those blasts than they were when they were blown for the first time in history of Klal Yisrael and traveled all of the generations. Because the creator of the universe, the Rebbeinu Sha'ilam, he utilized the Torah as his blueprint to create this universe. And the world has not changed. Yes, it's true, there might be some some erosion on the continents, continental plates eroding, sure. And it's true that the ozone layer might be disappearing and that there's a massive hurricane, Rahman al going on in Texas, Louisiana. All true. 
that brings about some physical changes. But the world, the universe, in the mitzvah is what it really is, hasn't changed a bit because the Torah doesn't change. And the Torah itself is a living blueprint to this world. Which means that HaKadosh Baruch is Akil Baraisa. He looked inside the Torah, Ubara Almi created the world. That means that he continues to look inside the Torah every single day. And the creation continues to flourish. And Mechadesh and becomes brand new. And renews itself on a daily basis. And since that the world itself is an extension of Torah, that means everything that's in this world is also an expression and an extension and an outgrowth of the Torah. And that means that the neshama is nishmas klal Yisrael, the souls of the Jewish people, which were already all created at the time that the Torah was given over in Har Sinai. And all those neshamas were hovering around the mountain, whether they were there in the physical bodies of three million people, or they were hovering around waiting to receive the greatest gift of all time. Those neshamas, those souls, they connected deeply with the Torah. Because the Torah was written for our neshama. It was written for our, our struggles and our challenges. It was, written, it was written and it was given over to elevate us and make us great. To help us fulfill the most lofty and noble of achievements, which is to be davik, to be close to Hashem. Every single neshama that has ever traveled the annals of history, especially that which belongs to Klal Yisrael, we all have the same desired goal and location that we would like to reach. And that is, we want the vacus, we want to be close to Hashem. The neshama always wants to be close from where it comes. How are we going to achieve that? Says the Rambam, there's only one way. It's through Torah and through mitzvahs. You want to try it with the, the Declaration of Independence? You want to try it with the Bill of Rights? You want to try some Chinese homeopathic medicinal uh, needles that they'll place into your back and you can say, mm, and maybe you'll get close to God? Not going to work, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You have a Yiddish and a Shama. And the Yiddish and the Shama only can connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in one conduit and one path. And that's called Torah. And the same exact Torah that worked for the Babis and the Zaydis, the same exact Torah that worked for the Chavetz Chaim and worked for the Vilna Goyim and worked for the mother and the wife of the Vilna Goyim. And the same Torah that Rashi and his daughters imbued and imbibed every single day of their lives. And the same Torah that the Ramban and his wife kept so beautifully, so, so profoundly, is the same exact Torah that we have today. And the reason is because our, the neshama has never changed. Remember, in democratic society, they claim that the desires of a person could change over the years the insights into the meaning of life could change over the years. The understanding of morality and what is right and what is wrong, it changes with the times and therefore we are forced, we don't have a choice, says the government, we must amend what it says inside of theirs, of those amendments and those bills. Because since that they are based upon rights, a human being living in a democratic society always is entitled to defend his rights. And if his rights are not being met inside the book, so then you have to change the rights so that I will also be taken care of. 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, there's no rights over here in the Torah. These are obligations that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given to us. And the reason that the Rebbe Nishalim has given us a list of 613 obligations, mitzvahs, chukim, mishpatim, is because our neshama needs this long and beautiful list of obligations. There's so many different pieces inside of our soul. There's so many different aspects and elements of who we are spiritually. And each one of the mitzvahs connects to a different chilek, a different portion of our neshama. Says the Rebbein Nishalam, I didn't change your neshamas. The same place where the neshamas came from when it came down to this world and went into the body of Yaakov Avinu, and the same place, the Olam and Neshama is the world of the souls, where I, I reached it and I plucked out the Neshama of the Rambam, and the same place that I plucked out the Neshama of Sarah Shnirsu, who was the, the founding mother of Beis Yaakov, I went into that world of Neshamas and I plucked out your Neshama also. And just like they connected to Torah, and just like Torah was written with them in mind, you should know that I wrote the Torah with you in mind as well. And if you will allow yourself to embrace this idea, and you will begin to see how, how just eternal the Torah itself is, then you, no matter what generation you are in, whatever your background is, whether you're born from a house in B'nai Brak, or you were born from a house somewhere down south and you grew up eating chazer on Yom Kippur and you never even knew what, what a mitzvah was. A person's Yiddish neshama will be able to connect and gravitate towards the Torah. Because in Hashem's infinite wisdom, remember Jefferson did not have infinite wisdom, he only was dealing with his trying times. In HaKadosh Baruch Hu's omniscient view of all of mankind, of all of history, John Hancock didn't have that world view that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has. Therefore, his rules and his laws have limitations. But in HaKadosh Baruch Hu's omnipotent creation of this world, and his intimate way in which he is completely involved in our lives and the history of the Jewish people. And the source, the battery pack for this universe is Torah itself. Says the Rambam, nothing will ever change. I will not add one single letter to the Sefer Torah. I will not take away one mitzvah because you don't like it in 2020. You don't like shotness. It's too, doesn't make any sense to you. So you're too lazy to go to the rabbi and get your suit checked. So should I take shotness out? It's not for this generation, really. This whole thing about being so careful with Lush and Hara, come on, it's enough already. Let me talk. Okay, maybe in the early generations, they didn't have telephones. They didn't have cell phones in their cars. They weren't sending voice messages here and there. They didn't know about social media where you could be on all day long. So to keep the laws of the Shadar was a piece of cake back then. You lived in a shtetl. So you had a few friends. You spoke to this guy. You spoke to that one. You spoke to this lady, to that lady. There wasn't an overlap so much of the families and the neighborhood. So how much did you speak? So for the thousand words that you said a week, so you'll guard your mouth from Lush and Hara. But now I'm in my house, there's a phone. I'm in my car, there's a phone. I'm with my wife on a romantic dinner, there's a phone call that comes in. I'm traveling on vacation, the phone doesn't stop ringing. I got emails I have to respond to. I've got WhatsApp, Instagram, I've got all the different things that I have to take care of. So is it possible that HaKadosh Baruch who said in this generation we have to be so careful with the laws of Lashon Hara? It's impossible. Says Hashem, no, I'm not changing anything. Maybe even all the more so. The lower that the generation is 
and the more disconnected that we are from the Rebbeinu Shalom, and the farther away we are from the glory of what Torah and what Mitzvahs are truly all about, perhaps in that generation specifically, a person has to make sure that they do the best of their abilities to uphold what it says inside of the Torah. Because that's the only way, the only way that a person is going to stay connected to our Kodesh Baruch Hu. And the only way to stay connected to Hashem is that we are connected to our Neshamas. Our neshamas, as we've said many times, are a chilek, eleikah, mima'al. They are a portion of godliness that was entrusted to us from HaKadosh Baruch himself. So if you want to be close to Hashem, you got to be close to yourself. You have Hashem inside of you. You have a piece of the shechina, of the divine presence that resides in you. How does one access the neshama? How does one appreciate the neshama? How does one begin to hear the voice of the neshama that is begging us, please stay close to Hashem? There's one pathway, and one pathway only, and it doesn't work any other way. And that's called Torah Hashem Tenima, the Torah that HaKadosh Baruch has given us, which is perfect. It is immutable. It is unchangeable. Tenima means it is absolute perfection. It never changed. It never will change. Nothing will be added. Nothing will be taken away. Hashem will not replace the Torah that He has given us with something else. Because if our Kodesh Baruch Hu would decide at some point in history, I got to change Torah over here, because the people just, they don't get it. I mean, look at them over there in America. Look how they're living their lives. They just don't get it. Look at all the Jews in Eretz Israel that are living secular lifestyles. They just don't get it. When Yoshua came into Eretz Israel, everybody was keeping mitzvahs. What's going on right now? Disco text on Friday night? Beaches on Shabbos afternoon? driving down the streets of Jerusalem in places to go pick up fried chicken that's not kosher. So you see, they don't get it. So what should I do, says Hashem? Let me change the Torah. No, it's not going to happen like that. Because the neshama hasn't changed. Because there's total perfection. Hashem is a perfect being. That means that everything that HaKadosh Baruch Hu creates in this world is absolute perfection. When he looks back on creation at the end of six days, the Yar Elohim as Kol Shasa, everything he did, he said, Toy mine, it's so good. The world is perfect. There's nothing to add. There's nothing to take away. Exactly the way that it should be. And that means if the world is perfect, and the world itself is coming from the Torah, the Torah is perfect, of course, because the Torah is the Das Elokis, it's the mind of Hashem. And Hashem is omniscient. And he's all powerful and he's infinite. That means the Torah is the same. And therefore, our neshamas, which are a part of this creation, but even on a higher level, it's a part of the Rebbe Nishalam. Our neshamas are perfect. They haven't changed. They might get buried under all the schmutz of this world. They might be yearning and wanting and they're lacking a connection with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. True. It's like there's a halacha coming up. It's going to be a big shayla this year on Rosh Hashanah. We have the midst of the Kiyah Shofar to blow the Shofar. And many people, of course, because of COVID-19, they're getting very nervous. The Baal Takeya, the one who blows the Shofar, is going to stand there in the middle of the shul with all of his saliva, all of his spit inside of his mouth, he's going to blow boo, the shoifer, and you'll see percolating at the top over there, you'll see his germs. You'll see his saliva. It might even fly out the side of the shoifer. So everybody's getting nervous. What are we going to do? How can we fulfill the midst of shoifer this year? 
the person who's blowing the shofar is blowing his COVID-19 into the, into the atmosphere. He's blowing his germs. We're wearing masks all this time and suddenly the greatest myths of, 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 of Rosh Hashanah is no mask, no distancing, no nothing. Blow all of your germs into the air. I hope I'm not frightening anybody. So what are we going to do? So all the Paiskim right now are coming up with different ideas. He'll stand outside in the hallway where nobody is. Maybe he'll stand by the bima. They'll, he'll drape a talus over him so that his germs won't transfer any place. I don't know, maybe we'll put a mask on the show. I don't know what we're going to do. But one of the shilas, one of the questions that is spoken about in the Mishnah, the Gemara, and the Paiskim is, what if a person is in a, in a pit and they want to blow a shofar out of that pit. So they're down 10 feet down the ground over there, and they're the only one that has a shofar, and it's Rosh Hashanah, and the people are standing by the edge of the pit, and they say, no, please blow the shofar. Does it count or not? What's the question? The question is, is that when a person is so deep inside the pit, and they try to blow the sound of the shofar, either one, it's muffled, it doesn't come out clear, or we say that the sound that's traveling through the pit, it's not the original sound of the shofar. And therefore you're not really hearing, you're hearing an echo that is coming out of the pit. You're not really hearing the sound itself of that which is being blasted. But there's somebody there blowing the shofar. But when you hear it up here, it's not really the sound of the shofar. The neshama that's buried deep inside the pit of mankind, the neshama that has been covered up and up and up and up and up over all these generations. This neshama that is so detached and so disconnected to itself and the Rebbe Nishayim. Even when it starts crying out and blasting its blast, you can't hear it. It's a muffled sound. Huh? Did I hear something? What? Speak Lashon Hara, don't speak. Did I hear somebody telling me not to speak Lashon Hara? And even if you would hear clearer the voice of the neshama, it's like an echo. And an echo is not the real voice. And therefore you can't truly hear the voice that's there inside of your soul. It says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, your neshama is no different than any neshama from all of history. Which is why the Rambam himself famously says that every single person, if they want to, could become a tzaddik like Moshe Rabbeinu. They could elevate their neshama the way that Moshe elevated his neshama in this world. If you want to. If you seize the opportunities in your hands to do such a thing. I, Moshe Rabbeinu, was 3,500 years ago. Moshe Rabbeinu was a prophet. Moshe Rabbeinu was a tzaddik. He was a righteous man who mastered everything in his life. How in the world am I going to be the one to make myself like a Moshe Rabbeinu? And the answer is because as Moshe Rabbeinu was so in tune with his neshama, and he understood all the kayach, all the potential that he had inside, and he maximized on that potential, the greatness that resides in your neshama is no less. And if you will be sensitive and in tune with what you have inside of you, you too will be able to maximize the spiritual potential that is inside of your soul. Says HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that's for all generations. In any place that you live. Whether you are in a shtetl in Europe, where nobody ever even saw a non-Jew to be influenced by him, or whether you are living in the streets of Tarzana, California, where Tarzan and his friends are hanging from the trees, being mashbia, influencing you all the time to think not like a Jew, to have interests that are not Jewish interests, to spend your time in ways that defeat the purpose of why it is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave you such a lofty and great neshama. But if we will hear the voice of our neshama, we will hear the blast of the shoifer, which is really the blast of our soul calling out, please help me. 
please bring me up in this world and we'll realize that the only thing that we have that will connect us to our neshama is Torah and mitzvahs then a person will be a walking proof that the Torah is nitzchi, it's eternal. That even on foreign soil, even under the barrage of challenges that our generation has, no other generation ever saw such challenges. They never saw an iPhone. They never saw TikTok. They never had a president who spews forth everything that he does all day long. They never witnessed violence and riots. They never witnessed mass destruction in the entire universe with COVID-19. They never witnessed the great American melting pot where everybody just gets melted together as one. You don't even know who's, who's a Jew, who is Hispanic, who is Asian, who is black. Everybody, we're just the same. We respect, we love everybody. This is an incredible Nisayan, an incredible challenge of our generation in a world that preaches acceptance and love and, and open arms to every single person and every single, single thing that they do, even when it's the antithesis of what HaKadosh Baruch writes in his Torah. Do you know how wicked those ideas are? They penetrate our mind. And we are incapable of seeing how beautiful it is to be a Jew. And why we should be Moisa Nefesh, why we should sacrifice ourselves and our time and our money and our energy and our abilities for the sake of doing a mitzvah. And why it is that we shouldn't go to those certain places because it's going to have a negative effect on our soul. If we believe in the power of the neshama, if we believe that the Torah that was given at Har Sinai 3,500 years ago never will change again. And Hashem is never going to replace it. Chalilei, He'll never ever replace it. Because if HaKadosh Baruch Hu would come and say, okay, look, we had a good run for 3,000 years, 3,500 years, it was pretty good, but you know what? Ever since the Holocaust, kind of been wavering. Or well, ever since the Crusades, it's been much more difficult to be a Yid. Since the Chorban by Shani, the destruction of the second base of Midrash, we can't even go back to our country. You know what? Maybe Torah is not going to work in Chutzlar. It's, it's not going to work in Japan, in Australia. It won't work in England. It won't, it's not really going to work in America. So Hashem says, you know, I'll gather as many Jews as I can into one place. I'll make a micro Har Sinai take place. And I'll give them a new Torah. If HaKadosh Baruch would say that, then Hashem is saying, I and my creations are not perfect. Perfection means it doesn't change. Perfection means it is eternal. Perfection means there's nothing ever that will be wrong with something that is to me, but that is ultimate perfection. If Hashem would Khalila, God forbid, decide to remove a mitzvah or add a mitzvah, or even worse, change the whole thing. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is then testifying upon himself that he is imperfect. And chas for Khalila to say such a thing, because Hashem is perfect beyond belief. And there's nothing as perfect, as infinite, as omniscient, and as omnipotent as Hashem. And everything that he creates shares that brand of perfection. And therefore, says the Torah over here, says the Rambam, you have to know, and you have to know very well, and it has to be an ima'amin be'emunah shalema, that I believe with complete faith in the Rebbein HaShalem. Shezoi sa Torah, this Torah, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us at our Sinai so many thousands of years ago, to a different generation, in a different world, in a different place and time, with great lofty spiritual people all around, it will never, ever at all change. Which means I will never add or detract anything that's in there. Because the Torah is perfect. 
He will never give us something new. Because that would diminish his greatness and his omniscience. And it would also mean that we don't have the same spiritual potential as previous generations. And that would be a very sad thought. To think that we are spiritually handicapped and that we can't rise above the challenges of our society and that we cannot cling to the ways of our Kaddish Baruch and have the deepest, most intimate, most meaningful relationship with Avinu Sheva Shemayim, our Father in Heaven, no less than they did in the Shtetelach over there, no less than they did in the fields of Morocco or in the cities of Yemen, no less than the Vilna Gain appreciated every single word of Torah in his life, and he realized that this itself is the very fiber and reality of the world. And he left over his teachings for all generations to see what he was able to uncover, what he was able to share with Klau Yisrael. What a sad thought it would be for us if we would actually believe that we're just not on that darga, we're not on that level to be able to receive Torah the way that it was in previous generations. That would mean that you'll never have a meaningful relationship with Hashem. That will mean that you'll never have a meaningful relationship with yourself. Because if your neshama it is the conduit to the Rebbe Nesha'ilam, and your neshama craves mitzvahs and craves the Torah, and as the Mephorshim right over here, we're talking not just about Torah Shebik Sav, the written word which was handed down in the Yisera's Hadibros, and the scroll that traveled with the Jewish people throughout their time in the wilderness that Moshe Benu wrote, as we pointed out before, word for word, exactly what HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him. But a whole other chalik, a whole other part of our Kabbalah Satayah, the receiving of the Torah, is Torah Shebaal is the oral law which comes to explain what the black and white words mean that was entrusted into the hands of our Chachamim, of our great sages of all generations, the preeminent ones, Chazal, Chachamim, Zichonim, Livracha, authors of the Mishnah, of the Gemara, of the Midrashim, the Sifri, the Sifra, the Zayar Kadosh. And therefore any single Rebbe, any single Taman Chacham, any Rosh Hashiva, who is able to be a link in the chain of that transmission of Torah Shabbat Pen. That's the same exact Torah that was given over by Harsinai. The same Gemara that Rashi learned, we're learning. Ah, we have an advantage. We have Rashi's commentary to explain it to us. The same verse in the Chumash that the Ramban learned a thousand years ago, we're learning the same Pasik. Yes, we have an advantage. We have the Ramban's commentary. But the same Chumash, the same words of the Mishnah that Rabbi Yehuda Nasi penned with his own hand, we're reading the same exact words. Because the Torah travels eternally from generation to generation, and it is immutable, doesn't change. It stands the test of time. And as a result of that, if Khalila HaKadosh Baruch would come along and say, I'm changing it, that means that he would have lost faith in the power of the Yiddish and Neshama to be on the same exalted level, in the same beautiful world of Ruchnius, of spirituality, to connect deeply with Torah, which will help us to connect deeply with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The Gemara tells us that Yisrael bli Torah, the Jewish people without Torah, is keguf bli nisham, is like a body without a soul. Do the Jewish people, do we even ourselves understand what that means? If anyone has ever been in a room when somebody is in their final moments of life, 
And if you're sensitive enough and you're watching the process of death that is going on, you are watching the ebbing of the neshama leaving that goof, leaving that body. And when the person gives their last breath of air, and you realize that there is no life going on anymore, you have just watched the neshama exit the body. And a body without a neshama, which is the spirit, the ruach, the power, the force inside, that body is just a body of flesh and blood. It is dead, it has no life anymore. Yisrael b'li Taira, the Jewish people without Taira, is the same exact image of the body that is lying there, deceased, because the neshama has left it. The neshama of Klal Yisrael, which infuses our ruach, our spirit, our neshama with life, the soul, the heartbeat of the Jewish people is the Torah. And as long as we have Torah in our lives, Am Yisrael Chai, we are alive. As long as we have Torah in our lives, the same Torah that was given over by our Sinai, we could connect to our neshamas. We could connect to the Rebbe Nishayim. We could be sitting in a society that is so depraved of morality, so empty of spirituality, so empty of people that care about Kedusha, about holiness and purity. And yet, nevertheless, we could thrive under these conditions because we recognize how glorious and beautiful and amazing it is to be a Jew. And the Torah is our glasses. It is what opens our eyes to recognize this. But Yisrael bli Torah. But if you have a Jew or you have a family or you have a nation of Klau Yisrael, that is functioning in this world without the Torah. They might look like they're alive, they might be very busy all day long doing things on their computer, on their phone. They might be running around making millions of dollars with a big business over there. They're exercising, getting big bulging muscles every day, a little bit bigger. They eat, they're vegan, they're a vegan pesci, they only eat this, they only eat that. They're so particular with everything that they eat, they make sure organic, healthy. Yes, they're alive! Says Chazal, no, they're not alive. Because if they're disconnected to the Torah, then they're like the body that doesn't have a soul. And a body without a soul is deceased. There's no life. It's dead. A Jew who doesn't have the Torah in their lives is spiritually dead. And the only thing that is going to be able to connect us properly with ourselves, with our mission, with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with the vaster Jewish people, the only thing that is going to connect us is Torah Hashem Timima, the Torah that HaKadosh Baruch has given us, which is perfect. And if we're waiting for something to change so that it could be a little bit easier for us, if we'd like to have an argument with the sages of our generation saying, you know, when Hashem wrote the Torah so many years ago, He never really envisioned that we're going to live in the kind of world that we live in right now. Such a modern world, such a technologically advanced world. There's so many different people around us. The pressures of society are so great, not like it was before. So maybe we should just start editing some of the mitzvahs that are there that's just so hard for us to fulfill. Says HaKadosh Baruch, you don't get it. This is your lifeline. This is your existence. This is kiheim chayenu. This is the, our life, v'arech yameinu, and the length of our days. As we say in our davening, when we return the Sifrei Torah to the Bima, 
We say it's Chaim he lemachazikim ba. It's a tree of life to those that will hold on to it. A person that is holding on to the Torah, they are Chaim, they are alive. They are breathing Ruchni as spirituality. They are connecting to their Nishamis. They are connecting to the Rebbein Nishayim. And that, says the Rambam, it never changed and it never will change. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu is perfect. And a perfect being makes no mistakes. And if he wanted the Torah to be something different, he wanted a different mitzvah to be in there, one detracted, one added in, he would have done it in the very beginning. Remember, the Torah existed before the world was here. The Torah itself is the mind of the Rebbe Nishayim. It's his ratzon, it's his will. The will of HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't change. He's not like us. We go whatever way the wind is blowing. One day, yeah, we're excited, we're happy, everything is going great. The next day, somebody talks not nice to us and we're down and we're depressed. One day, we go through, we decide, you know what? I feel like killing animals is a bad thing. I'm going to be a vegetarian right now. The next day is Yom Tov and my mother puts a roast on the table. I handle such a thing, I'm going to eat roast. We blow with the wind, whichever way the wind, the society is blowing. That's how we blow, that's how we go. HaKadosh Baruch is not like that. He is indivisible. He is infinite and almighty. Nothing affects the Rebbein Nishayim. He is the only constant thing in this world. And therefore when he designed the Torah as an expression of his ruts and of his will, it is also immutable, will not change. And therefore, if only we'll get the message, says the Rambam. And that message is, that the Torah is perfect in its very essence. It needs nothing. It requires no approbation from anybody. We don't have to live it to prove that it is good. It's good because Hashem said that it's good. Ki lekach toiv nesati lachem. Says HaKadosh Baruch, I gave you a good thing. Hold on to it. V'yalta azoivu, don't abandon it. There's no good in this world besides Torah. Hashem needs our haskam, He needs our approbation. He needs our support. Some atheist somewhere in some foxhole over there, he's got to tell me, I'm not so sure the Torah was really written by God. I'm not so sure that it's really the right thing. I need him to prove to me that the Torah is emes. Chas The Torah stands on its own. It is the mind of Kevi Yochel of the Rebbe Nishayim. And it has survived for thousands of years in all different situations, even in the darkest moments of Auschwitz, when the Yidin's lives were hanging by a thread and they had no idea, will they live or will they die? Those that were faithful to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, those who felt that the only way they're going to survive is if the neshama bekirbi, the neshama resides inside of them, they were looking for mitzvahs. Do you know how many yidin smuggled in shoifrois, a shoifer, somehow into the camps by Rosh Hashanah? In Auschwitz, where the Nazis, Yamach Shalom Vizichroi, tried to make a Jew forget that he was a Jew, and yet somehow, they managed to slide a shoifer underneath the fence. And when the Nazis weren't watching, they went into the private chambers in some barrack or some bunk over there, and everybody got close. And the same tekiya, shvarim, that we're going to say on Rosh Hashanah, they said it there as well. And they were in Gehenna, but they were alive. Because when you are connected to Torah and you are connected to mitzvahs, you are connected to your neshama, and then you are connected to Hashem. And when you are connected to the source of all life, you are alive yourself. On the other hand, you can have a Jew who looks like they have it all. Fame, fortune, 
health, good looks, everything. Money in the bank, beautiful cars, palatial estates, they can have it all. But they don't have Taira. They don't have mitzvahs. They are truly disconnected from their true self. And one who is disconnected from their neshama, they are disconnected from Hashem. And then all the materialism, all of the good life that they would like to believe that they have, all of the independence and the freedom that they think that they are living with, which allows them to do whatever they want. It's such a distressing life because when you are out of touch with your neshama, you are out of touch with Hashem. And the only way to get in touch with your neshama is be in tune with the Torah. Because the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu is the Torah of Yemiyah Navi. And the Torah of Yemiyah Navi is the Torah of Shimshon Agibor, Samson. And the Torah of Shimshon Agibor is the Torah of Rav Chai Gon. And the Torah of Rav Chai Gon is the Torah of Rashi. And the Torah of Rashi is the Torah that went over to some small, little, simple yid over there, somewhere in France, 700 years ago, named Rav Yankel. And Rav Yankel's children went off to yeshiva and they learned Torah. And they were the bearers of the torch, of the light of the Torah to that generation. And then there were crusades and there were pogroms and they traveled to another country. And they passed over the light and the torch of the Torah to another generation. Until it trickles itself all the way down to us. 20, 20, 57, 80 on the Jewish calendar in the worst spiritual gullus that anybody could have ever dreamed of. But it's exactly the same Torah. And just as it gave strength to the Jews in Auschwitz, and just as it gave meaning and purpose to the Jews as the Crusades were coming in and they were dying out pikidish Hashem because that's what it means to be a Jew. And just like in the Renaissance of Torah which took place in Bovil so many years ago after the destruction of the first temple when the Jewish people began to grow in Torah like never ever before. This is the same exact Torah that we have in our hands today. And what a schos, what a merit HaKadosh Baruch has given us. What a treasure, what a gift is entrusted in our hands. What an opportunity, what a responsibility we have before us. Not just to learn Torah, not just to keep Torah, but to live Torah. Torah as Chaim, it is a living Torah that has been living since before the world was created because it is the ruts and the will of Hashem. And if in fact we will do that, and we will appreciate and we will value what our Kodesh Baruch has given us, and we will realize the reason that it never changed, the reason that HaKadosh Baruch Hu never made another high Sinai. The reason that even though right now our neshamas are buried underneath so many layers of shmutz and filth, yet the Torah that was given over to the previous generations is our Torah as well, is because Hashem in His perfection created a perfect world. And that means the Torah is Tanima is perfect. Our neshamas are perfect. Klal Yisrael is a nation that strives for perfection. And through the perfect Torah and the mitzvahs that the Rebbe has bequeathed to each and every one of us, we will be zeiche to be in touch with ourselves, with our neshamas, 
And that will bring us the ultimate simcha and the ultimate joy and the ultimate menuchas hanefesh, peace of mind. When we know that we are connected with the Rebbeinu Sha'ilam and we are trying our best to give him nachas in everything that we do. May we be zeichet to be amongst the ma'aminim, the true believers in Hashem and His Torah, and recognize that we have everything that we need to succeed in the spiritual world of Avodas Hashem. Have a wonderful day. Mm-hmm.